Well, hello again, and we are going to continue our review, and now we go into our humerus. The humerus is the long bone of your arm. We will see that we have uh, the head that gives you the articulating surface that are, will articulate with um, the glenoid cavity of your scapula to make your shoulder joint. Uh, followed by the neck. This is the anatomical neck. However, we have another neck here, and that's a very common place for fracture. We'll call that the surgical neck of your humerus. We have um, two processes here. We will call them tubercles. One, as you can see, um, let me try to zoom. Um, one is uh, smaller than the other, so we will call the smaller one the lesser tubercle whereas the larger one here on the lateral side, we will call that the greater tubercle. In between them, there will be a groove or a sulcus. Uh, we will call that inter intertubercular sulcus. Intertubercular sulcus. Um, then we go down to the shaft of the humerus. We will see approximately between the top one-third and the lower two-thirds, we will see a roughening here of the bone, and we will call that roughening deltoid tuberosity. This is the area where the deltoid muscle gives its insertion around here, on the lateral aspect of the junction between the upper or the proximal one-third with the distal two-thirds. If I continue down with the shaft, we will see that the shaft is changing shape and it's not cylindrical anymore. It becomes more triangular and it will have um, an, an edge here. Um, that edge will be called around here. We will have a roughening uh, close to the edge. That would be your lateral supracondylar ridge, lateral supracondylar ridge and over here we will have the medial supracondylar ridge. We'll have a process here, um, relatively small, although it looks uh, significant over here. That will be your medial epicondyle, medial epicondyle, and on the other side we will have the lateral epicondyle. Down to the articulating um, the distal articulating surfaces of your um, humerus, we will have two structures here. One of them articulates with the ulna, with the olecranon fossa, or the olecranon uh, of your ulna. That is your trochlea. This part here that looks like a pulley, that is your trochlea of the humerus. And next to it, lateral to it, you will have something that looks like a marble that will articulate with the head of your uh, radius and we call that capitulum. So this is the capitulum and the trochlea. Again, this is your medial epicondyle and this is the lateral epicondyle. We will see a couple of facets of interest here. Uh, one of them is on the anterior aspect but the larger, the larger one, really, is on the posterior aspect. Uh, you see that will, is caused by the olecranon, the olecranon, and therefore we call that olecranon fossa, whereas this one is caused by the coronoid process, so we will call that coronoid fossa, coronoid fossa. Sometimes we see another fossa here that's caused by the radius, so it would be a radial fossa or radial notch if we see it, all right? So these are the features that I would like you to remember uh, on your humerus. Now to the muscles that attach to the humerus, if we go to the lesser tubercle, we will have the um, subscapularis muscle attaching here. Uh, the greater tubercle, we have two muscles attaching the supra and the infra spinatus muscles. Uh, at the uh, intertubercular sulcus, we will have three muscles attaching. Our teres major muscle attaches here. Then almost at the bottom of the groove, 
we will have the latissimus dorsi muscle and that the lateral lip of the groove we will have a third important muscle called pectoralis major muscle pectoralis major muscle so teres major latissimus dorsi and pectoralis major muscle again this is your deltoid tuberosity where it is the insertion point for your, your deltoid muscle there is an insertion here for the muscle that comes from the coracoid process that is your coracobrachialis insertion uh, over here we will see a large area where um, a muscle takes an origin here and that muscle is called brachialis muscle the brachialis muscle is taking a large origin around here over here near the lateral supracondylar ridge we will have an origin for an important muscle called brachioradialis brachioradialis muscle um, other muscles of interest if we flip to the other side uh, we will see here um, the medial head of your triceps muscle is taking an origin here in this part of the chat of the shaft the lateral head of your um, triceps is taking an origin around here so these are the muscles that you need to remember um, looking at the humerus and uh, muscles uh, that attach to it whether it's origin or insertion all right now we are done with our humerus join me please for the next video that is um, uh, the radius and the ulna we'll see you then